This is MFT Raw and here is some camera news. With just over six months to go until we're expected to see the release of Samsung's Galaxy S22 Ultra, the leaks and rumors have prompted Let's Go Digital and Texino Concept to create some renders of the forthcoming Samsung flagship. These guys very rarely make a concept that isn't very close to what is eventually released. There are a few things to pick up on here, but the one that stands out the most for me at least is the possible involvement of Olympus in this camera system. Around the lens in the style of classic Olympus, they have put the phrase Olympus camera optics and 200 megapixel image sensor, suggesting that the new handset's camera lenses will be at least designed by the brand. The rumor at the moment is that Xiaomi and Samsung are both working on a 200 megapixel ISO cell imaging sensor to go in their respective flagships for 2022. If these rumors are true, then they are going to have to invest in some kind of advanced image stabilization to get sharp shots handheld on a mobile phone with 200 megapixels. Optical image stabilization will struggle to keep such a high resolution image steady enough, especially when you factor in whatever readout speeds a smartphone might have. So Samsung are rumored to be developing sensor shift stabilization for the S22, something that Olympus definitely have expertise in. This will physically move or shift the sensor to compensate for handshake, as opposed to trying to move the lens, as is the case with OIS. As well as the ridiculously large resolution, the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra is also expected to have a continuous periscope style zoom lens. Now this is different from a normal periscope zoom as it will actually be able to zoom optically. The system on the S21 Ultra used two fixed telephoto lenses and then it digitally cropped between the two focal lengths to give you whatever you wanted. This GIF here shows that OIS may be included in the new system by actually shifting the prism to achieve the same effect. The Samsung Galaxy S series launch event is usually in February and I've got to say the possibility of Olympus being involved this time has really got me hyped for this one. The full specifications for the Canon R3 have leaked and Canon have released an official video about the forthcoming camera. I called it last week when I said it would be no more than 30 megapixels. The Canon R3 will feature a 30.1 megapixel backside illuminated image sensor. Okay, I was 0.1 megapixel out. It will support multi and smart controllers. It will have a very angled touchscreen, a new accessory hot shoe mount. It will have a magnesium body, high speed Wi-Fi and wired LAN ports are there. 30 frame per second electronic shutter with autofocus and auto exposure tracking plus raw shooting at this speed. Autofocus will focus down to as low as minus seven EV, which is very impressive. It will have eight stops of coordinated control IS with optical IS and in-body IS. Again, crazy impressive. 4K Canon Log 3, oversampled 4K, internal raw video, which is nice. Inclusion of cars and motorbikes in autofocus tracking. Speed light shooting with electronic shutter, as well as the same weather ceiling as the EOS 1D series. It will also have dual card slots, accepting SD and CF Express cards. The Canon R3 was supposed to be announced on the 29th of June, which is today, but this clearly hasn't happened. The leakers must have got the date mixed up with the release of the Canon 14 to 35 F4L, a constant aperture, ultra wide angle zoom with the high quality optics expected from the Canon L series. Unusually for a lens of this type, this one will have five stops of image stabilization built into the lens, up into seven stops when paired with the IBIS in the camera. This should allow for some really long handheld exposure shots. Of course, quality like this does not come cheap and it's priced at around 1700 pounds and the same in US dollars. Keeping with the specs theme, B&H Photo have already listed the Panasonic G86, showing off some of the specs, but it's nothing that we didn't know already. But more interestingly, they're showing off their expected sale price. B&H think that the G86 will sell for approximately 2,500 US dollars, which I must admit is a fair bit lower than what I thought it would sell for, or what I think it would sell for. The listing reads some of the highlights, the new Micro Four Thirds sensor, the updated Venus Engine image processor, 5.7K 60p video with 10-bit sampling, DCI 4K 10-bit video with 442 unlimited recording, UHD 4K 120p with 10-bit HFR and of course approximately $2,500. I should stress that this is their expected sale price and it probably isn't what they will actually sell it for. Plus it's not even available for pre-order yet. It just seems like the people over at B&H are just as excited for the GH6 as this guy. The GH6 is gonna have phase detect autofocus. Now I can't say how I know, but I'm coming to you from Tokyo, Japan and I'll just say that uh, since I've been here on occasion, magical camera company fairies, they exist. 
<laughs> and little bits of information trickle their way towards me. This is film studio Taku Hai, and he claims that he's got it on good authority that the G86 will have phase detectable of focus. And I think that there's a very good chance that he's right. We already see some form of phase detect autofocus in Olympus Micro Four Thirds cameras with its hybrid contrast slash phase detect system. So as the tech advances, it's not implausible to think that we might see full phase detect in a Micro Four Thirds camera very soon. If it is possible, then I expect Panasonic will do whatever it takes to get it into their new flagship. It's no secret that the autofocus has always been the G8 camera's Achilles heel. And if they can nail it with a G8 6, I think that that will bring a lot of users back to the system. Excuse me, G8 6 is going to be 5.7K resolution. Um, the magical pixies <laughs> uh, whispered in my ear something more along the lines of 7.7 .7 or 7.8K resolution, actually very close to 8K resolution. So that, you know, I'm in Japan, lost in translation is a real thing here and sometimes little mistakes do happen and that could have been the case. But I'll just say that there is a slight possibility that uh, the resolution is actually going to be closer to 8K. Now at first, I thought that the only thing that this does for me is ruin the credibility of the guy's previous comments. I mean, come on man, Panasonic themselves have said what the video resolution will be and what the camera will be capable of. So it does seem really unlikely that they would leave out such a juicy detail like that. But if you think about it, they've not let on to what the actual resolution of the sensor will be. So we can't really rule out if the sensor is technically capable of shooting more than 5.6K. And we're forgetting about anamorphic mode. On the GH5, you can shoot 6K in anamorphic mode, although it is limited to a max of 30 frames per second. So the idea that the GH6 could be capable of more than that 5.6K isn't really a crazy one. If it is true, an 8K anamorphic phase detect GH6 will be a huge draw for filmmakers. Let's hope so, but take this one with a massive pinch of salt. And finally, you only have two days left to get your entries in for the Comedy Wildlife Photography Awards. This annual event is in its sixth year and it seeks to highlight and promote wildlife conservation around the world. The competition has six categories. There is the Alex Walker Syrian Creatures of the Land category, where you can enter up to three funny pictures of land animals. The Spectrum Creatures in the Air category is for comedy shots of birds, bats, and other creatures that fly. The Think Tank Photo Junior category is for kids up to 16 years old and they can enter whatever kind of animal they want. The Amazing Internet Portfolio category the Amazing Internet Portfolio category is a collection of four images of funny wildlife and the Olympus Underwater category is for creatures that live in the water. Nothing to do with the type of camera you have. And finally, the Video Clip category is where you can enter up to two funny video clips of wildlife up to 60 seconds long. If you fancy a giggle, I'll leave a link down to the previous competition entries below. Thanks for watching, that's it from me. If you want to see more of me, then hit that like button and that subscribe button and of course share. As well as news, we also do reviews. So if you want to check out something that is shallow and cheap for Micro Four Thirds, check this video here. Or if you would prefer something ultra wide, fast and affordable, then check this video here. Cheers guys, see you next time. Peace.